Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 where I'm continuing my shuttle constructed Mars mission. As a reminder, the premise is that instead of building the International Space Station, the shuttle could have been used to build an International Mars mission at a 28 degree inclination. This would mostly use real modules meant for the ISS, possibly be priced at about the same cost as the ISS, and be tested in low Earth orbit for an extended period of time, so it would serve as a space station like the ISS. Eventually though, it would be designed to push out from low Earth orbit using ion engines. The launch you are seeing here is the 8th of the series, and it is bringing up another Xenon tank to the International Mars mission. There is already one 15 ton Xenon tank on the mission, but we need three of them minimum. Uh, and these Xenon tanks of course fuel those ion engines, and the ion engines will need to ultimately push the mission out of Earth orbit, capture around Mars, and then handle the return burn from Mars to Earth, and hopefully also capture around Earth. Uh, so lots of work they have to do, and so we have to pack a lot of Delta V. Now, as far as getting the whole mission into high orbit, it can do that first and then we can subsequently refuel the Xenon before it pushes out to Mars. So I'm planning on that. So there we have the Xenon tanks, uh, this time being controlled by a Skylab TRS from Raider Nix Skylab mod. And it turns out that the Skylab TRS does not have very good control over anything. Uh, it barely has very good control over itself. So I deploy my own version of the TRS with much more powerful RCS thrusters and solar panels to help rescue the situation uh, before it crashes back into the shuttle. And so here we are turning the Skylab tug towards the oncoming tug and the tug docking with the Xenon module. And eventually I'll decide to put the Skylab tug back into the shuttle but before I do that, I transfer the hydrazine from the Skylab tug into my own little TRS. This will be the first time we're bringing any mass down from a mission on the shuttle. And here the Skylab TRS is positioning itself for its return. But it's so weak that it takes a long time to re-rendezvous with the shuttle. Uh, there's the little burn. And uh, we can actually do all the other business while this is drifting towards the shuttle. So. Uh, docking this to the station, uh, slash Mars mission. It's not that these little tugs are perfect, mind you. In fact, oftentimes I have the station point the relevant docking port towards the oncoming new payload, uh, but uh, at least it can control the payload properly and not accidentally bump into things. So you've got that going for it. So here we go, approaching with those slightly askew solar panels, I know. Um, but uh, here we are docking up and and there is the whole rotation thing um, yeah it's a little bit confusing to me I probably shouldn't have gone with these particular common birthing mechanisms there are a lot of versions of the common birthing mechanism and this one maybe I should have avoided but now that I'm using it I'm using it so for simplicity's sake it's best to stick to the same docking port because just because they're named common birthing mechanism does not mean that they interface with each other. So uh, it is not the case that everything called common birthing mechanism can be used with these. In fact, probably none of the other ones can. So here we are getting the Skylab TRS back inside. A little bit sloppy there, but at least we didn't bump the sides of the cargo bay. As usual, it takes a bit of rotation in order to get it to actually dock up. And we come back down with the shuttle, this time with payload in the bay. And that does seem to throw off the KOS re-entry script. It is supposed to take into consideration the mass of the vehicle when determining what periapsis to uh, set when it does the retro burn. And that sort of equation that, uh, takes, that uh, takes the ship mass as input was correct for 1.1.3 with the CSS shuttle but does not seem to be correct with this version of the shuttle in 1.3.1. So we're sort of landing short here and I tried to take control from KOS, but instead of doing control C, I press C and for reasons unknown, when I actually went into the cockpit, it started tumbling over. 
Um, I don't know why going to the cockpit made it do that, but that clearly was the case. The script is still running, and turning on SAS while the script was running was not a good idea either. And the OMS pods got ripped off is what happened there, and finally I did control C properly to get out of the KOS script, so now I have control. But uh, yeah, we lost little bits of the orbiter. Actually, that might have helped us get back to the runway because we lost mass and being lighter, we glided better. But uh, we could only aim for the regular KSC runway, not the shuttle landing facility runway. And once again, because I don't have the split rudder brake, we don't have any air brakes on this. Um, the landings are always going to be faster than I would like and awkward. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, the air brakes would be a huge help, to be honest. But anyway, we got them safely back. I do need to adjust the crash tolerance number on this shuttle. and But I probably should do that after I fix the air brakes somehow. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Okay, so the next launch. And I'm trying to make sure that the launches in each video are different, carrying a different payload. So rather than bring up another Xenon unit, which we still need to do, I opted to bring up an MPLM, a multi-purpose logistics module, to carry our supplies. A thousand days worth of supplies for a trip to Mars. Now, an MPLM uh, normally wouldn't carry that much supplies, but first of all, we don't have to carry that much water because we have a water recycler. We also have an oxygen generator too. So we only need about a hundred days worth of water and then we can recycle the rest. Uh, so it's mainly food taking up the space, but um, making sure that the MPLM had the right volume, the same volume as a real MPLM does, I put nitrogen in to simulate the area that the astronauts would normally float around through, and it kept utilization fairly low, so that uh, basically less than a third of the MPLM is actually occupied by the supplies, and it still worked out to have enough supplies for the trip. Now here, the tug is trying to grab that PMA because we need to pull that away to dock the MPLM. The PMA can't be there because it's got the wrong kind of docking port. Now, I do have the A-pass docking port on that side of the tug, but for some reason the A-pass docking port doesn't work at all. It, it is not even any magnetism or sense that uh, they're pulling towards each other, and we've had this problem with this PMA before. So I just have the PMA drift off for the time being. I uh, decouple it and decide to dock the MPLM first, and then we'll have the tug grab the PMA afterwards. The PMA has been nothing but trouble, and we are not really trying to dock the shuttle to the station. Besides that, the shuttle's docking module doesn't have quite the same docking port, even though it calls itself the same docking port, I don't think its docking port is actually compatible. So anyway, the MPLM is docked, and we have our supplies, and the tug goes off to grab the PMA. This is of course a dicey maneuver because the PMA has no control whatsoever, and so we can't orient it or anything, and we certainly don't want to start it rotating. We do have persistent rotation here, I believe, and that would cause problems uh, quite permanently. You can't time warp out of it. But here we are grabbing it, and I opt to just deorbit these things. I have the tug deorbit itself and the PMA to dispose of them. Uh, I've decided that we're probably not going to directly dock the shuttle to the station slash Mars mission, and so we don't really need the PMA. Okay, and here is the slow retro burn as it tries to drop its periapsis into the atmosphere. We are currently over the Pacific Ocean. Uh, we also get to dispose of the Cygnus that we had brought up earlier in a failed attempt to use it as a tug. And the reason we can uh, dispose of it now is because its supplies that it had been carrying food, water, and oxygen could be moved to the MPLM. Um, and that was critical to ensure that the MPLM could meet the mass restrictions of the shuttle, otherwise filling it with a thousand days of food, a hundred days of water, and a thousand days of oxygen or something like that, uh, it could not be carried by the shuttle, to, uh, to be frank. So uh, we needed to have something else carry part of that, and 
Cygnus managed to do that at least, even though it couldn't be used as a tug. So here we go with the return of the shuttle on the ninth mission in the sequence, and this time it is not carrying anything in the cargo bay, uh, which makes the result of this descent really confusing, because so far we've been going too far when it doesn't carry anything back down, though still managing to get to the runway, and falling a bit short when it is carrying something down. But this time it's not carrying anything, and it ends up falling short. So, yeah, I don't know what to make of that. This was, I guess, a fluke. There might have been something else going on, I'm not sure. Uh, here you can see it a little bit wiggly as I take control. And it is falling very short, so short that I could not bring it back to the runway. Instead, we had to land it basically in the middle of Orlando. So, if Orlando International Airport had been around here, we could have made use of that. But... That not being the case, we just found some open ground and stopped. So at least the Kerbals were safe, but uh, yeah, this was an odd one and I'm not entirely sure why it had this problem. It's possible that it was because I was using physical time warp while we were high up in the atmosphere and physical time warp threw something off about the calculations or something. Anyway. The final launch of this video, Launch 10, carries up the BA-330, the Bigelow Aerospace Inflatable Module, which has not been added to the space station, though one of Bigelow Aerospace's inflatable modules has been added. It's a small test subject, but uh, this module has not been added to the International Space Station. But it's handy for our purposes here. It'll give the Kerbals a lot more room on the long trip to Mars. Uh, it is 20 tons, actually I think it's 22 tons, and plus the tug, it's basically at the payload capacity of the orbiter um, for low Earth orbit to the station's orbit. And so we actually had to figure out how to get the shuttle to a higher apoapsis when the external tank runs out. Unfortunately, the trick is to make sure it gets that higher apoapsis while still maintaining a suborbital periapsis. And we didn't quite do that. The external tank ended up in orbit past 140 kilometers. So still have to work that out. How we can get it to the apoapsis of a 400 kilometer orbit while still having a periapsis under like 40 kilometers. It, it's all down to like the last 2-3 seconds of the burn with the external tank. So it's really hard to get that right. And tell it how to do that ahead of time. If I was con controlling it manually, it'd be a lot easier, but I was not. So anyway, here's the payload, and you can see the mass down there, very heavy. It does occur to me that we're really adding a lot of mass to our mission here. That is simply habitat space. You know, this module, uh, more than 20 tons, and then of course Destiny, Immunity, uh, and the uh, Quest Airlock. All these could be a lot smaller, obviously. We could just have this one inflatable instead of using Uni and Destiny. And so, yeah, we're uh, really pushing it here and I might regret that. Once we attach the ion engines and see exactly how much Delta V we have, I might feel like we want to dump one of these modules. Probably. Uh, probably the first to go will be the quest airlock. The problem is the quest airlock is counterbalancing the recycling modules on the opposite side, so it's not so easy to dump uh, stuff here. And of course, uh, we can't dump Unity because it's basically what everything is docked to. Uh, the easiest thing to dump, I guess, is actually Destiny. Destiny is most expendable at this point. But we'll save those considerations for some other time and let's bring back down the shuttle and see exactly where it ends up. So far we've been having mixed results as far as trying to get it back safely. So here we go with re-entry again, type it correctly, and yeah, I haven't changed the script at all at this point, even though we had that problem last time, and I just wanted to see how it goes. Now, we're actually carrying more OMS fuel than usual right now, and that's because the external tank helped us to get into a higher orbit than even I expected because it went into orbit, right? It was supposed to go to about 360 by 40, and up going to 360 by 143. 
So here we are over the Gulf of Mexico at 64 kilometers in altitude. Everything looking a bit red, but spiffy. And about 200 meters per second left. Now that's important because eventually I want to try and match the mass of the real shuttle with this. That mass will lead to it having much less delta V. And so seeing that we do have that much left over is a good sign. That means we're basically doing something right and improving our operations so that we can eventually um, make it all happen. I dumped the fuel, by the way, as the shuttle does at higher altitude. So we are coming down as light as possible and circling around in order to make a landing at the shuttle landing facility this time. First time in this video that we're actually going to get back to the shuttle landing facility, uh, though it's not going to be the smoothest descent. And once again, I find myself pining for air brakes, and uh, which we do not have. But fortunately, the runway that is added by the combination of Kerbal Constructs and real KSC is a long runway, a very long runway, and I take advantage of that. So after this, we still have some work to do. We need a xenon unit and then an ion propulsion unit with hypergolic thrusters as well. And after that, the main ship will be done and we can push it out. After that, we'll have to add an earth return vehicle and a lander. But at this point, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like and I'll see you next time.